right, so we're headed down to a nursery called The Barn, and we've got some really cool ideas to expand our orchard. Let's get there, get some trees, and talk about this. All right, we're coming up on the nursery. Got a cool old red barn. center. I love stopping by this place. It is just such a cool nursery. And these hoop houses here are 20 foot wide. I've been here so many times just mapping this out and looking at it because I showed you guys before I bought that 20 foot wide hoop house structure and we're going to get it up here eventually. But uh, I'm always comparing how big it will be when I get it up. This is exactly what it looks like. It's the same poles, same everything, the one I bought. This one is 20 wide by, I think it's 76 or 74 foot long. So it's gonna be pretty much exactly this size in here. We're gonna have lots of room for the rhododendrons. Really cool little nursery here though. They got a lot of neat stuff. There it is, the barn. Look what Shelly just found. This is got to be, let's look real quick yellow magnolia but what's the oh elizabeth we bought that yellow one there was a little bare root planted it and it didn't make it but uh there's a big full-size one check one that out beautiful. yeah it is look at that all those buds are just about to open the weather like is weird sun. here right now we got snow coming down oh same one elizabeth this one's just a little further ahead maybe they had it inside now look at this we bought one of these saucer magnolias we just got to get it growing up into something big enough to plant out. Right now it's in a one gallon pot. They've got them here. Look at this guys, 90 bucks. You could grow them. So they got all kinds of hydrangeas here. We've got Japanese maple. Shelly's over at the maples. Ooh, and rhododendrons, look at that. Lots of rhododendrons. And they'd probably be, some of them, you can see some of these buds aren't looking as nice, but a lot of it has to do with the weather. We've been getting snow lately, which is weird. We never get snow in April. But nevertheless, Washington weather, you never know what you're gonna get. Look at all these beautiful Japanese maples. So this is what we're here for. We are looking at fruit trees because we're expanding the orchard. And so we've got to find another peach tree which I think the one we bought was a red raven is that right shell a red raven peach I think that's what it was called and then uh, we bought a couple cherry and then we need to find some nice plums these are all apples so far where are the peach trees all right I found the plums they're all in here and I'm gonna have to look these up as we go because I don't even know all these different varieties of plums that we've got there's a golden one what is that yellow egg plum we're looking for purple plums purple really sweet plums all right ali found the peach trees so it looks like we've got a couple here reliance peach and frost this one's that frost peach we saw this at the other nursery but we were looking for another one of the red ravens i don't know if we're gonna find it all right so shelly found what she's looking for you got a plum tree there yep dwarf brooks plum and it said you were talking about cross-pollination, that it pollinates well with Italian. Is that what this one said right here? Yeah, Italian plum. So let's go find, you actually found an Italian plum over here. Where are we at? Uh, right there. Awesome. Pretty nice tree. Italian plum. And actually, let's look at the back side of this thing. Medium purplish black fruit with an excellent sweet flavor. And they say both of these varieties are good for drying and turning into prunes, so that'll be a lot of fun. They're, they're actually self-fruitful, but they say that they'll actually fruit a little better with cross-pollination, so we'll get these guys in the ground too. All right, so that red raven is actually a red haven when I looked it up. <laughs> this frost peach, they don't have it here, so this frost peach, as I'm reading about it, it doesn't look bad at all, and it's a freestone peach, which we definitely wanted for canning, so I think we're gonna end up going with this frost peach here for our peach selection. Boy, these pots ain't no joke. That's the haul. All right, so we got these loaded up and got them home. Let's take you out to the orchard and show you where we're gonna put these guys. So let's show you where these trees are gonna go. Now, I was out here yesterday and I was trying to figure out how I was gonna do all this because originally, 
you know, we've got our row of espalier trees right here. And then we've got all our figs way out here. And on the other side of that driveway area, we've got another little bit of figs over there. But uh, I was kind of thinking, you know, maybe we should plant all of these extra fruit trees that we've got way out over on the other side and just put all the figs here. I do have some plans to kind of change that around here soon. And we'll get to all that at some point in another video. But as I was standing out here yesterday, I thought, you know, I've got this huge area right in here. I'm gonna eventually refence this real nice, like we've got along the other side. And then we're gonna do grapes along the fence line. But I originally intended this to be a second row of espalier trees. So that's where these things are gonna go. We're gonna do, I'm gonna move over about 10 or 12 feet here and we're gonna put in posts and I'm gonna do a whole nother second row of espalier trees. We're gonna do the peaches, the plums and the cherries. I always debated about doing cherries, but you know what? It's, it can't be too hard. All it is is pruning. And we've proven that with the apples and the pears, it works out just fine. In fact, a lot of you want to see this. These apples aren't quite there yet. They're, they're starting to open. We've got tons of flower buds on them. As you can see, every one of these little areas has just got tons of flower buds in there. We haven't seen the flowers yet, but they're coming. But the pears over here are just starting to bloom. And man, are they gorgeous. Look at that, just beautiful. They're just like I was saying before, we've got uh, the Bartlett pear here, the Comus and the Moonglow. The Moonglow is kind of in between the two. It was supposed to be a good pollinator for each of them because it would bridge the gap in time, you know, uh, in time of bloom so that this got uh, pollinated with the Moonglow and then that one got pollinated later with the Moonglow. We'll see what happens. The only thing I'm a little concerned about right now is we have had really weird, uncharacteristic cold weather and we've been getting snow. I have not seen bees out here. And normally we've got mason bees and all kinds of native bees swarming around this area right now. So I don't know, we'll see what happens with these. I don't know if they're gonna get pollinated very well. I suppose I could come out and hand pollinate. That is a massive undertaking for all these trees, but it might have to happen. Another thing that's gonna happen out here soon in the orchard area is we're gonna be changing around how we're doing these raspberries. We've done them a certain way all this time, but we're always left with a ton of weeds and there's these weeds like down in here that grow up the, the raspberry vines and just choke them out and we're constantly weeding. And so we've got this really cool idea. Shelly and I were sitting out here talking and we thought, why don't we rip up these metal posts, put in a wood post at each corner on each end and a few in between and make them wide. So we would actually have wooden posts maybe all the way out from here to here because I made the rows more narrow here and more wide here. So I got more room over on this side, but we could do about a four foot row. And then that way it would be nice and wide. Lots of raspberries could grow up and we'd have a fence, like maybe a three foot uh, welded wire fence all the way around the whole thing. So when they grew up, they lean into the fence and we could even have a wire along the top just to hold them all in so we don't have to come back and tie them up every year. Then we have a little tunnel that we can take off and put on right over to the chicken coop area. So we can run those chickens in through the tunnel every year, let them completely weed this whole area out and then put them back. Doesn't that just sound awesome? I think it's gonna have to happen and I will film all that and show you guys, you know, putting all that up at some point, hopefully this spring when we get to it. But uh, we gotta do something about it because this is, it just turns into a mess every year. My mother-in-law actually proved this out last year. She ran her chickens into the area. They didn't disturb the berries at all, the berry plants, but they completely weeded the whole area really nicely for her. So that's what's gonna have to happen. So in the end, we'll have apple, pear, plum, peaches and cherries all in this little compact area. And that's one of the beauties of these espalier trees. They don't take up hardly any room at all. Look at that. Just a beautiful line right down there. And you just got to prune them once or twice a year, depending on what you're going after. You can see we're getting tons of, uh, tons of blossoms on them. And we get tons of fruit every year off of these. In such a small, compact area, everything is very manageable. You can do this with any tree, I'm convinced. You can 
keep this thing pruned down to a size where you can actually manage it. You can pick fruit from it. You just got to keep them pruned once a year, twice a year sometimes. It just, it's really the way to go for these little fruit tree orchards, at least for a home farm, because it doesn't take up a lot of space and they're easy to manage. You know, when you're just doing it by yourself and you need to be able to reach the fruit, it works out so nicely. And then once we get that fence up and have grapes going all the way down this row, I think it's really going to round out the orchard nicely. And then it'll just be figs beyond there. Although we do have one more idea. Actually, I have one more idea. I'm driving my wife nuts. If you want, I'll take you out there real quick and show you. All right, so you guys have seen the fig orchard and that's just this massive expanse out here. So I've got 34 figs currently planted all throughout this side. And then I've got six planted on this side, although I've got room for four more rows down that way of two. My plan is to use that dozer right there and pile up more dirt, kind of push dirt up this way so that I can get a third row over there. Now, here's the thing. I am highly considering, since I just, I have more figs than I've got room. I am highly considering taking those six over here and moving them over to here and planting the rest of my varieties I haven't planted out in this area. Here's the thought. Plant one in between each of these figs in every row all the way down. Keep the rows 15 foot wide between trees, but in between these fig trees in the rows, it would be seven and a half foot because these are 15 right here. And then I'd go seven and a half foot all the way down. Now, I know a lot of people are thinking, you know, Mike, that's kind of ridiculous or playing too close together. But my intent is to never let these things get massive. My intent is to keep them pruned back to maybe four foot max and then keep that new growth pruned back all the time because I want to easily manage these things. I don't want them getting out of control. And by doing that, 15 foot is more than enough to mow between rows. I could just mulch down each row every year with grass and leaves and hay and keep those rows going real nice. I just come through and prune them every winter with the rest of the orchard. But by doing that, I could fit 30 more fig trees in just this area. And then what that would do is open up this area over here for planting other trees that I've wanted to do, like pawpaws and maybe some walnuts. And, you know, I still got the mulberries and there's so many other trees that I could do on this side over here. So lots of thoughts, lots of ideas, lots of plans. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And we're just going to keep moving forward with this thing. So that's what's going on for right now. We're excited to get those peach trees and the cherries and the plums in the ground. I did always want that second row of espalier trees. It's a lot of fun. I love pruning them. I know pruning isn't everybody's passion, but I think it's so cool. And I think they look beautiful when you start pruning these things down into espalier rows. And then we'll have multiple different types of fruit out there, not just the apples and the pears. I think it's going to work out really, really good. Plus, they'll be manageable. They'll be at a height that my wife and kids can pick the fruit. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you have any comments or you have any thoughts or on you know my plans out here, especially with those figs and the spacing on them, I know I'm going to get a lot of people saying, don't do it, Mike. But I think seven and a half foot down the rows will work out okay if I keep them pruned and managed properly. properly. So we'll see what happens. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe if you want to follow along. Have a fantastic week. And I'll see you in the next video. Adios.